I have some of the best fishing in the southwest on my doorstep. But if you recognise where I am, please don't reveal it in the comments because giving away secret pike locations results in unsustainable pressure on those fish. Recently, a school pupil I'm working with asked me the inevitable what's your biggest ever fish question, which led to him wanting to know why a pike difficult to catch. That question had me a little stumped um, because there isn't a simple answer. So the focus of this pike fishing vlog is to try and explore that. It's a subjective question because the lad's pike fishing experience amounted to about 45 minutes of him watching a bung and for him that was too long. Uh, but my job as a professional angling instructor is to show the best way of guaranteed pike even though there's no single method of achieving that in all situations. There are ways of increasing your chances of catching fish though and I'll try to cover those as, as best as I can. If you watch my angling videos then you'll know that I like to give the fish a chance and that my preferred style of fishing is catching on lure or flies. So that's my focus but it'd be totally wrong to ignore the merits of bait fishing as it can often produce a big old fish. But pike are fragile creatures and I believe it benefits the fish as well as the angler to celebrate not what you catch but how you catch it. Anyway, time to catch a fish. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe. That is massive. Oh, I've got that freak me out. Oh, Three look at it. Because you caught it. See if you can pick it up and put it back in. Oh, I well, calm down. A snake. Oh. Whoa. Well done. First job with people to catch an eel. Put your knees under there and I'll pass it to you. Okay, so I want you to put your hands out like that. He might jump, so don't be scared. Just place it nice and slowly. It won't hurt. Okay, then we'll put him over the net. How's that? Did you get the picture? Well done. Nice. Yeah. What a day. After all that excitement with schools, we've only got about 45 minutes of light left. But um, yeah, we're gonna go for a go for a stroll and see if we can catch ourselves a, a nice perch or a pike on the lure. But I'm not holding my breath. Starting off on a key tech flapper. scale down. That wire trace is six pound braking strain by the way. That's my old favourite Fox Micro. Yeah it's very bright. It's got something a bit of orange in it. Thing is it's quite coloured water so that's the reason why I started off with something a bit more big. That might get a bit lost in that coloured water. Steve's enjoying himself, I think. He's just wandered off. I think, they, I think they've all had a really good feeding spell this morning. Yeah. Because it's not like we're picking up tiny ones, is it? It's not even like little ones are chasing it or anything. We've got more chance for pike. Oh, fish on. Fish on, Steve. Fish on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pike. He's completely done me. It's a pike. Yeah. He's completely done me. Where is he? He's in those reeds to my right. What about if I shove the. Well done. Gone. Gone. Is he gone, is he? Yeah. What was it? Pike. Pike? Yeah. Oh, nice one. Still, that's fine. That was good fun. But that's fine, it's opened out. Oh, he hasn't snapped, he opened it up. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. Good. Long live the pike. <laughs> what are you going to get in then? It's funny, isn't it? I mean, no one's, no one's obviously fished this little st stretch because the reeds aren't bashed down. No. I don't know what the, the law is on that one, whether it's a, whether you're allowed to smash the reeds down to make a little opening. Only if you're an officer of the law. <laughs> Excellent. I love that joke. I'm having it. It's exciting. We've had two. I mean, it takes you a that's your second one, isn't it? So the question was, why are pike difficult to catch? Uh, well, in my instance, it was difficult to catch because the reeds got in the way. Uh, <laughs> I guess the real answer is the mouths are bony 
so hook penetration can be difficult. They're apex predators, so there's less of them. Naturally, there's going to be a, a pyramid for all the prey fish at the bottom, and as you go up the, the pyramid, ecological pyramid, you end up with the predators at the top, and there's fewer of them. Um, trophic levels, that's the correct terminology, and uh, they don't need to eat all the time. One of the most difficult things about catching pike is finding a place where everybody else hasn't tried to catch one already. If you can find a water where they haven't been uh, targeted, then I would say they're pretty easy to catch. I'm going to head out again today on, on my more local river uh, and I'm going to chuck some lures about. I'm going to take two rods this time because I put the focus on pike. I'm going to take a lure rod for throwing bigger lures than I was yesterday. But I have to be honest, I seem to have more success hooking pike when I'm targeting perch with tiny lures like that. Have you been out all day? Had anything? Really? Generally speaking, bait fishing is easier, but that's not always the case. I once took eight children out from the local youth club, pike fishing. Four of them stayed with a colleague and dead baited, and the other four came with me roving with lures. Halfway through, no one had caught a thing, so we switched over and uh, the four lads that had been dead baiting were bored out of their skulls, so they'd been catching nothing for two hours and couldn't wait to chuck lures about, which they did in the, in the very area they'd been dead baiting in. Within about five minutes, one of them had a fish on in the very spot they'd been dead baiting in all morning. And then five minutes later, another one, then another one. Which is special there. Can't quite reach that far bank. It's a shame. And there's a fish following it right up. On. That turned out to be my only follow of the session. Overnight it poured with rain and dropped from 9 10 degrees down to something like 1 or 2. I've only got to go to the River Severn to discover that these fish will hit lures in coloured water. I'll have to come back tomorrow. The water's a little bit clearer, it's probably the only place I can lure fish. I'm going to give it a few chucks. And this is a spot where, free, where you can do free fishing. I don't know if they're legally moored, but I used to bring um, Merchants Academy school kids up here during the winter for fishing lessons. I wouldn't be able to do that now. It's very sad. Oh, one other thing. My wedding ring's down there somewhere. Right there. Lost it about eight years ago. I know from experience it's snaggy as hell, so I'm going to start off using a realistic um, realistic looking lure, something like that, that's the um, Seville Magic Swimmer. So in theory with it flooding like that a lot of the fish would have taken refuge in this uh, cut. There's anglers everywhere, that's what I've caught so far. I'm surprised there's life because it's absolutely filthy down there. Oh, that's promising. You can guarantee that pike has seen more lures than I've seen hot dinners. But with the weedless set up, it's actually got to smash it hard enough to push that, that bit down and get hooked up. I'm going to have to go for the perch. I'll probably catch a pike then. That's a fox micro shad and uh, that's called my two biggest perch and my biggest pike uh, and that's attached in this, on this occasion to a uh, six pound flex on it wire. One of the most common mistakes by far that I see when people lure fish is 
retrieving much too quickly. And when it's cold and the fish become less active, quite often they'll sit hard on the bottom. If you retrieve your lure too quickly, it's not going to go along the bottom. If you keep the rod absolutely still facing the lure and stop, if the line just goes slack, then you know you're along the bottom. So if you're retrieving too quick, if you stop, the V in your line, where the line enters the water, if it's still sinking, will come towards you. Such a pretty fish. It's prehistoric to be these doors so up like that. I reckon I could catch these all day long. I wonder if there's any big ones. That'd be nice. Deary me, they're getting smaller, not bigger. It's just nice to catch something. The perch are really welcome bending the rod, but I can't finish my vlog without catching a pike. So get away from the crowds, head round the corner and start chucking some larger lures. I suspect that was a big perch. My amazing wife has gone and taken the kids to school and is picking them up, so I've got a whole day, no excuse for not catching a fish today. So I've had some really um, interesting chats with various people over the course of the last couple of days. And the general consensus is that big lures catch the bigger fish. It's not something that I necessarily subscribe to, but and I've been in competitions where small lures have won the day. It's something I'm really keen to explore a bit further, actually. I'd love to hear other people's opinions, whether they think big lures catch bigger fish. Look at it. Lure packet, traces, traces. Lure packet, lure packet. Wet wipes. Totally not a scum. Not anglers. I couldn't have asked for a better day to blank. It's absolutely stunning. I'm going to sit down and have a coffee and just enjoy it. Bumped into about three anglers who have all been out fishing for the last few days and all caught absolutely nothing. So it brings us back to the question, why are pike so difficult to catch? Well, they're cold-blooded, they don't need to eat. All the um, prey fish, they're cold-blooded, they don't need to eat. If they're not feeding, then they're not really uh, going to be very vulnerable to being ambushed. And the whole system just closes down. Right, 12 days have passed since I decided to do a vlog on pike fishing. I'm kicking myself for it because I uh, decided to do it and made up the title for the vlog uh, before setting out fishing. And uh, I really didn't think it was going to be this difficult to catch a pike. So the rivers are still in flood. Yesterday we had six dead baits out with the school that I was working with and not a sniff. That was down on the Bridgewater and Taunton Canal. So I've just moved out a little bit further afield now, the lockdown's finished, onto the Somerset levels to see if I can find a, a pike. I hope it works, because I need to finish this vlog. <laughs> it turned out to be a really bad move. It wasn't a venue that I fished before. I bought my day ticket online, and it's just one of those horrible days where I quickly realised that the whole of the um, system had been drained out and sent out to sea. And I was fishing in about seven or eight inches of water. Well, this salmon blanked. Right, <laughs> after my disaster yesterday, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going for these pike. There's nothing more humbling than nature. You know, it's really quite funny that I found it so difficult to catch pike, and really it serves the purpose of this video. Why are pike so difficult to catch? Anyway, I've spotted some fish. They're topping just underneath this bridge. So I'm feeling really excited. I'm really glad I came out. That's not. A 
that's a really bad start, but it will give me a chance to test out the benefits of having 80 pound braid. Completely opposed to it three weeks ago, but I thought I'd give it a go since that's what people are doing. Well, it worked. The question is, have I bent the hook? No. Can't help but feel these fish would have seen hooks before, though. Big old splash like that. The natural instinct for a pike would be to go over and investigate it. But when they've been caught a few times, I sometimes wonder whether the smaller lures start to pay off. It's interesting that that shoal of fry have all moved off just from that one cast. I've got pike all around me. Uh, I'm casting this great big western spinnerbait out. It's spooking the shoals of um, sunbleak I think that they're feeding on and it's spooking the pike. They're just not having it at all, not follow no follows, nothing. So I'm going to scale down to something a little bit more natural and a little bit more um, delicate I suppose. ages since I've listened to Peace and Quiet. You forget what silence sounds like until you come out to the Somerset levels. Sparrowhawk is quite straight in front of me. That is gorgeous. Silent as well, so silent. Hallelujah! <laughs> Yahoo! I haven't got it in yet. Oh, silly boy, don't pose for the camera. I don't care that you're small. I'm just pleased to have caught you. You don't know how much you mean to me, Mr. Jack. Alright, let's do this properly. I'm going to rest him in the water for a minute get the mat out because that's tomorrow's well it's the next generation's uh, 20 pounder that is now it's been blessed by me ah oh, that is such a relief It's only a baby. You can't do a pike vlog without a pike. I can now finally move on. I, know, I might catch a few more, but blimey, what a relief. Oh, let's get that mat wet.
and that's why you don't use nets because <laughs> they can get themselves in a right old tangle thankfully it's not a, a treble it's a single hook I don't bother with stingers or anything like that it was a good idea to know where the hook's gone in before you pick a fish up like this you can see it's gone in there They've got such thin membranes here. I see people chinning pike, putting either their fingers through the gills or... Oh, that is so cool. Thank you, Mr. Jack. You have no idea how much you mean to me. I never normally put all the weight of a fish on the head like that, but you don't need that at Yeah! <laughs> the fast retrieve on the bright orange Barkley Shad. I guess because it's shallow. You can afford to retrieve it quite quickly with a big weight on like that. And he certainly wasn't put off by that fox jerkbait trace. It's all a learning curve for me, this heavy geared stuff. I mean, this isn't even considered heavy. This is a 40 to 100 gram rod. People are now asking, you know, what, what rod do you recommend for 100 to 200 gram casting weight? I'm still struggling to get my head around it. Obviously it works. Go. Stay on. Good boy. Wicked. Like buses, aren't they? they wait ages and then two come at once. It's just in the insides of there. Very lean fish. Just take the clutch off. Yeah, I've just taken the clutch off, and uh, there we go. Lure just pops out. Do you like fishing with a single hook? Never like trebles, really. Fish back in the water. What's that? Twenty seconds out of water. I haven't got a mat, it's in my bag. We've got nice soft wet vegetation here. It's in a rubber net. And look at that. An absolute beauty. I like to check my fish for traces if you're wondering what on earth I'm doing. None. No traces going to flip. I suspect that that is the 
markings of a, another pipe. Maybe it's mum. <laughs> Maybe it's mum's had a little nibble on it. What a beautiful fish. Never, never grow tired of their markings. Lovely. What's that? About five different venues um, before I actually found a pike. It's worth travelling for that extra 10 minutes now that uh, lockdown's over. Still in tier two. Um, it's nice to still see that there's pike in the Somerset levels because you hear all the horror stories about fish removal and um, poaching and otters and all the rest of it, people going in boats. But the Somerset levels is a beautiful place and it's the <laughs> I wouldn't have actually minded blanking here. It was a stark contrast to the smelly urban environment I was in yesterday. So on Wednesday, I was determined to get the pike from this vlog and I put six rods out uh, on Bridgewater Taunton Canal with dead baits on. I had a couple of other assisting coaches looking after that side of things. Not a touch all day. The only one that did get a take was one of the students, which was fantastic, on um, one of the lures, but he inexperienced. He just pulled into it and, and bent the hook. But that's another, that's another lure angler for life, because <laughs> it is exciting when they hit that lure. I forgot how exciting it is actually, especially when they throw themselves at the lure right in front of your feet. No matter how many times it happens, I still absolutely jump out my skin. Oh, I'm not fishing there. Right, I've got hardly any battery left, so I'm going to save the rest, and uh, thanks for watching. I don't do another vlog before then. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Uh, sorry I've not done any bait fishing. I don't have the patience for it, I think. At least with the lure you're doing something. <laughs>